Being involved with bodybuilding, I very quickly saw the value of rear delts. You know, the back of your shoulder back here. The guys that didn't have rear delts, it really hurt them on stage. They'd stand to the side like this and their shoulder would look like it just sloped down in the back. Then you had these guys that had what I call sledgehammer rear delts. They would come out and their shoulder would be full and round all the way to the back. And that just creates this really nice, dense, thick look from the side. I was very fortunate. I had a, a guy who used to help me out. His name was Nick Bowman that really taught me the importance of rear delts and how you just got to punish them. And that's how you should start off every shoulder workout. If you think about shoulders, there's not a lot of stretching here, here, here. You're not really stretching. So I just want to show you how you can put your shoulders in a better position to stretch. So let's start with the rear delt. My favorite thing to do for rear delts is the reverse pec deck. I feel that it loads, it contracts really hard. And even though I'm not getting back real far, that's okay. It still demolishes my shoulders. Having said that though, it doesn't give you a stretch when your rear delts. So if you wanna get a little bit more of a stretch when your rear delts, you have to use a cable. I mean, you could hold a dumbbell like this, but there's no tension going laterally. You could use a cable and stand here. Now see where I'm at here, as opposed to like, let's say I had dumbbells, I'd be right here. You see the difference in the range of motion? Now I'm getting more of a stretch. These are fantastic. I love these. I think the only reason why I don't do them more is that the reverse pec deck just works so well for me. I, I like to stick with those. But that's one way to put your rear delts on a stretch and just make them burn. Now, if you're a side delt, kind of the same concept. You know, you're usually just from here to here. Sometimes people put them out in front, but that's not really stretching your delts. So you've got several alternatives. You could use a cable. You could actually do it this way behind your back. Now, see when you stand out right here, see how my shoulder's in a stretch? So you can do them like this. Or you could do the, this leaning version that bodybuilders have done for many, many decades where you just lean and come up here. Now, you know, I don't necessarily like this one because there's, again, the tension, it's a dumbbell, so there's not a lot of tension going this way. Personally, I'd rather see you use the cable. Where you could use the dumbbell is now we're moving around to the front of your uh, shoulder, the anterior deltoids. Normally, again, you start right here. That's your range of motion. But if you do these on an incline, now look where I'm starting from. So now I've put a really good stretch on my shoulder. So come up until the tension, if you come up here, the tension will start going away. So come up just high enough to keep tension on the delt and stay right there. That extra range of motion sometimes can make a huge difference in your shoulders. That was a little bit of the kind of the science on how to stretch your shoulders. But now let's talk about the experience. There are certain things I like to do with, with intentionally with a short range of motion. Now there's reasons for that. You can put yourself in a really strong position and you can use heavier weight and just get a lot of reps. Sounds simple, but everybody thinks it's kind of silly when they see it. Now I'll give you a couple of examples. Now I want you to think about partial reps, okay? Let's, again, let's start with our rear delts. One of the approaches you can use is you can use a weight that's a little heavier than you normally use. Like let's say you use 20 pound dumbbells on a rear delt raise. You could use 30s and you can do partials. Notice how, I'm not going all, notice how I'm not going all the way up. I'm focused right here. When you do that, there's another thing you can add in that makes these ultra nasty, and that's high reps. Instead of doing partials for eight reps or 10 reps, I want you to try 20 reps, 25 reps, maybe even 30 reps. Um, the guy who taught me these, Nick, he's taught me to do sets of 60. Let's take it to side delts. Same thing, just randomly, say you normally use 20 pound dumbbells for a side lateral. We're going to use 30s, but we're only going to come up halfway. Not even halfway, just a partial. I like to tilt my head back like this, high reps 20 25 30 so it's high reps with a heavy weight and a short range of motion let the people laugh at you they're all going to start asking you for help once they see how big your shoulders are getting doing that so let's talk about um overhead pressing i've wrote many times that i don't know that it's really necessary to get really big shoulders as long as you're doing all the lateral variations it's not that i'm totally against uh, shoulder pressing. The problem is there are certain positions that I think cause shoulder issues in the long term. May not hurt real quick, but in the long term. And the shoulder is a really delicate joint. You ask anybody with a shoulder injury and they'll tell you, man, it's very easy to inflame, hurt your shoulders, get labrum tears, you get rotator cuff strains. There's all kinds of stuff that happen when you do overhead pressing that's maybe where your form isn't where I would like it to be. What I want to start with though is a dumbbell press. When I do a dumbbell press, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to keep the dumbbells out in front of me a little bit. So this is much more of a natural movement right here. I'm kind of bringing them up together. If you watch my arc, the dumbbells are kind of coming up together like that, as opposed to, you know, getting real high up and pushing like that. 
honestly, that kind of hurt my shoulder just doing that. Um, same thing with the barbell. You know, I see people doing the behind the neck press. And I know, I know a lot of people are gonna get mad with me saying this, but I'm just not a fan of the behind the neck press. Mainly because every single time I did it, I would wake up and my shoulders felt like a bomb went off in them. I would much rather see someone in a natural strong position right here than force back here and pressing. I'm not anti-pressing, I just want you to press. My tip is when you press, try to keep the weight out in front of you, your elbows out in front of you. You'll notice when I do a lot of my pressing that I don't come down all the way. I stop right here. One of the things through the years that really inflamed my shoulders as well was using a barbell or whatever, a Smith machine, and taking the weight all the way down. See how my shoulders start rotating all the way down? That was another thing that caused a lot of pain. And I started having my clients cut them in half maybe 15, 20 years ago with great success. Much, you know, shoulder pain relieved. All right, another really cool thing that I enjoy is um, thinking about exercise profiles. I know everybody talks about it now. Um, this company, Prime, has been doing a really nice job designing equipment. And when you say exercise profile, I mean, basically, when you're doing, when you're going through a range of motion, there's certain parts of this range of motion you're stronger, certain parts where you're weaker. It's as simple as that. People try to do is they try to match the strength curve. Basically, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make the weight heaviest when you're your strongest and make the weight lighter when you're at your weakest. So let's say on a, in an exercise like a side lateral here, you know, there's this type of machine here you can set it up so that it's heavier at the bottom and then it gets lighter as it goes up. You're matching the exercise profile, so theoretically you're keeping more tension on the muscle all the time. I think that's a great way to do these. If you have the ability to use machines that allow you to manipulate that exercise profile, I think they're fantastic. Now, I also do this backwards. The gurus will say to do it that way. I also like to do it a little differently. I also like to load the weight in the contraction even if I'm weaker. And honestly, I'm getting, I'm probably using a little bit of momentum and cheating getting the weight up so so in other words i will make the weight so that's heavier at the top and on this machine here it's setting it at two but basically what that's doing is it's lighter at the bottom but then it gets heavy as i'm contracted but since it's lighter as i come up i can actually get it up there and then all of a sudden there's a heavy load that i'm working against it's almost like i'm building in an iso hold into the exercise it's really like an iso hold but i like doing that too again people are going to tell you it's backwards and i'm doing it wrong but i'm actually doing it for a very good reason your tip is i want you to match exercise profiles but then i want you to experiment try some different things with the exercise profile you may not have all this equipment that's fine there's different there's very very basic things you can do so another tip would be if you want to work the top for example like when i had my super spinatus injury you can work the top part of the range of motion right here right now the thing is is you're weaker so you're going to, have to use a lighter dumbbell work the range of motion right here tremendous tension right there just doing that and i already showed you the heavy partials and hopefully you've already tried them and your shoulders are already burning this would actually be a good superset you could go heavy on the partials and then go pick up a lighter weight and work here so another thing to think about is just work different parts of the range of motion as well and i've talked about that I don't, I don't think every exercise has to be full range of motion. I don't think every exercise should be partial range of motion. I think a good intelligent combination of, of uh, mixing it up. Okay, I wanna hone in on a little bit of basic technique stuff now because I think it's important. Let's start with a side lateral. I want you to think about your shoulders and in terms of what's getting worked as opposed to what's what's facing up. So if your shoulder is up right here, you're probably getting a lot of work right here. If your arm is right here, you're probably getting a lot of work right there. That's why it drives me crazy when people say you build big rear delts by doing overhead presses. No, you don't. You don't build big rear delts by being in this position right here. You work this, not that. If your goal is to work the side part of your shoulder, uh, that part of your deltoid, you've got to make sure that this is up when you're contracted. Now you've seen me doing the Y raises on the incline bench right here, but let's just start with something really basic, just a side lateral. I see a lot of people doing this. Look at, look at the position my arm's in. That's not side delt. That's, that's front delt and maybe a tad bit of side delt. What if I kept my palms down? Now look at where I'm at. That's side delt. You don't need to overly rotate this way, by the way. I see a lot of people doing that. I don't know that that's the best for your shoulder bit in that position pulling up. So I'd rather keep my hands flat and make sure the easy way to do it is to make the dumbbell come straight out. I feel that right in my side delt. Now, the other thing I see with um, shoulders, and I'm kind, of, I'm kind of uh, kind of going against what I'm saying here, but I see a lot of people that are real, they're really truly isolating, and they're not letting the rest of their muscles work together. It's okay sometimes to use a little bit of cheating, a little bit of traps, a little bit. I would just rather see you do some of the lighter stuff with it so you, so you make sure you're getting the 
targeted muscle. So I'm not against a little bit of cheating when you're dumbbells. I'm not against that. But if you're going to do that, just make sure you get some of the lighter stuff in. So cheating is okay as long as you're doing a little bit of lighter stuff so you can really focus on the right head. All right, I want to show you something else I like for range of motion. I really like working on range of motion for your shoulders. It's one of the reasons why I get the deep tissue work done every, every week. These are called over and backs. Basically, you can get a band. And what I want you to do is simply go like this. Over and back, okay? I, I feel like this helps your shoulder girdle flexibility. I feel it just contributes greatly to shoulder health. What I like to do is do a little bit of it when you're warming up, but after you get a lot of blood in your shoulders and they're real tight, then throw in, then throw these in toward the end. Sets of 10, sets of 15. You will be amazed at how your shoulders are on fire. As you go, you'll notice that you're getting more flexible. So what you do is you start bringing your grip in more and more. And the more you bring your grip in, the harder, see, see now I'm right here instead of right here. So now it's much more difficult right here, but I'm still able to, still able to do it. Speaking of shoulder health, again, you, you, you really have to pay some attention to your shoulder health because that joint can get banged up pretty easy. There's another exercise that Dave Tate taught me. It's called spider crawls. I'm making do today with this. Nor, you don't want to use this. You want to use one of those short bands, those Elite FTS short bands. You can, you can look up my spider crawl video. I've got an exercise index on it and I explain it in great detail. But a spider crawl basically is you pull your hands far apart as you can. Now, I don't want to break this, so I'm not going to do that. But you pull your hands apart as far as you can, clear out here. Then you walk down. I come down to about my waist, then I come up over my head. What it's doing is it's fighting this, this position right here coming out, and it's making a lot of your stabilizers, little subscapular muscles, and a lot of really cool stuff in your back just turn on and stabilize your shoulders. This is an exercise, and when you do these for three or four weeks, you will notice your shoulders definitely feel stronger. Your rotator cuff, everything feels stronger. Let's talk about rear delts a little bit more. Um, so we talked about the side laterals. Let's talk about a bent over lateral and your hand position. I've done a lot of rear delt raises this way. And that's okay. That's rear delts and side delts. You'll feel it more in your rear delts, but just by virtue of your hand being in this position, you do get some level of side delts. If you wanna get a little bit more isolating on your rear delts, simply turn your hands in like this, okay? And pull up like this. That little hand position makes a huge difference. Now, not only that, not only that, I want you to also think about your traps and rhomboids when you're doing these. I think sometimes we try to force ourselves into a position to really isolate and we don't let the muscles work together. So I don't want you to think about being locked right here or locked right there. I just want to let everything move, okay? Let everything move. Don't come up here and just sit here and do this or relax and do that. Let everything move, don't even think about that. Think about your rear delt contraction. So in your mind, I want you to think about squeezing my rear delt, I'm squeezing my rear delt. The one thing I don't like though is when it turns into a shrug. And usually this is because people have really weak rear delts and their traps are taking over. So if you start doing this, you've gotta lighten the weight up. The tip is, if you're shrugging, lighten the weight up. And the other tip is, don't worry about being shoulders retracted or shoulders protracted. And that's where mind-muscle connection really matters. Just overall in bodybuilding, I think it's a good idea to just let body parts move because if you have a really good mind-muscle connection, you can nail the muscle and you can just let everything move so you're not developing these uh, kind of these uh, weird patterns that call shoulder issues and scapula issues and all this kind of stuff. So I know that in my programs, I put chest and shoulders together. And the reason why I do that is so your shoulders don't get too banged up from, from getting loaded twice in one week. Having said that, I do not think it's a bad idea to have a separate shoulder day if your shoulders are lagging. That is okay. I would only say this, be careful with a ton of overhead pressing if you're already doing a lot of pressing for your chest, barbell work. You know, you don't wanna kill your joints with tons and tons of pressing multiple times during the week with a barbell. So if you're gonna do a separate shoulder day, focus on a lot of lateral variations, focus on some high intensity techniques, some partials, some drop sets, things like that, and use more dumbbells that move freely when you're pressing than a barbell, and you can absolutely demolish your shoulders. The other thing you can do when you think about your split, it's not a bad idea to train your shoulders before your chest. If your chest is great, your shoulders are eh, that's okay, train your shoulders first. You just got to, they're going to be tight when you go to your chest. So just be ready. That's kind of a weird feeling if you've never had that before. 